listening to Radio Free Flint, and today I have a really good show for you for a change. This is David Nicola, who is a super lawyer from Flint, Michigan. Welcome, David, to Radio Free Flint. Welcome, Art. Thanks for having me. Uh, we were also, for many years, spirited competitors in the spirit of law, trying to seek the truth, which is why we, un and usually, unusually, I should say, came together to make this podcast. And uh, David, why don't you tell the audience how that came to be? Well, we uh, we had a case with People versus Sheree Miller, and it uh, obviously turned into a national media frenzy on Court TV and the, the Good Morning America. These, all these different uh, networks were covering it because it was uh, so salacious at the time. Uh, because there was videos sent back and forth from her to her uh, friend that she had uh, allegedly conspired with to kill her husband. So uh, she started this affair, and but this was the this was the very beginning of chat rooms and the very beginning and the very essence of non-commercial use of the internet. And uh, this was right in the heart of it. So there, there's a lot of new things happening. And it was, uh, you know, the technical stuff. There's, there weren't a lot of experts at that time uh, that, that weren't teaching at schools or whatnot. And so it, it, it was really fresh, new, very salacious, naughty. People like that stuff. And, uh, it, but it was serious, too, because a, a, an individual was murdered, and her husband. And it, uh, you know, it became, the, oh, she did it, that type of thing. Maybe she did, maybe she didn't. And there was a lot of evidence on each end that went both ways. And quite frankly, uh, as this matter went along uh, in, in, in the conclusion of it, the jury was split between men and women uh, right down the middle. And uh, the men were voting to acquit and the women were uh, didn't like her. So the case we're talking about is People versus Sheree Miller in Genesee County Circuit Court. It was tried uh, in front of uh, Judge Judith, Judith A. Fullerton, a circuit judge. Uh, and uh, I just happened to be the prosecuting attorney. David was the defense attorney, as things would turn out. I did not try the case. I put the case together as it was rolling along uh, and then uh, assigned a team of lawyers to work on it. And we worked together throughout the case uh, until the verdict came back. So uh, it's unusual to see the prosecuting attorney on one side and the defense attorney on the other, chatting about this case that they both handled, but there are some unusual developments this past week. Uh, so, um, David, why don't you uh, tell us what those developments were? Well, they, they re redid it, this case on 2020, and it's been many, many years, over a decade. And before that, Dateline did a, a couple hour special on it as well. So we're talking so, about network TV, national TV, ABC national TV. is 2020, and I think Dateline is NBC, correct? Yeah, yeah, and the trial was uh, filmed, or, or at least it was uh, projected uh, in the courtroom, and that was, at, that was at the height of court TV, and they played the whole trial, and every year on New Year's Day was like their biggest trial, and they played that over about three times or four times every January 1st, Yes, there was a lot of people watching the television show, but they, they just replayed it over and over again. So new audience members didn't know what happened. So I, they, they liked that part about it. Well, they actually covered it gavel to gavel. Yeah. And live. And uh, in those days, uh, it wasn't uncommon to have our trials covered gavel to gavel by even the local media. Sheree Miller uh, was an interesting defendant, and this is an interesting case for a lot of reasons. Number one is it has jealousy as a motive. It has all the all the ingredients, you know, manipulation, uh, lo love. I don't know if love was in this. She did profess love in her confession letter, uh, but it's it's an interesting case because it contains all these elements that uh, Dave and I have seen over many years in homicide cases in Flint. Uh, and, and there was something weird about this case. And the weird part was uh, back then, David, a young lawyer who had quite a bit of experience at the time he tried this case, but we didn't, you know, DNA was new. Uh, 
emails. We didn't use emails. We needed a document. So we're taught in law school and how to how to make sure this document's often uh, authentic. And so we learned all the procedures about how to prove that something should be considered as as truth by the jury, as, as uh, that it has veracity. And uh, this case presented a whole different wrinkle to it, which was email. Talk about that for a second, David, because that really set this trial off in a direction that I didn't want it to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, we we now know, and we we were learning at the time and was progressing that uh, you know you do you could do an email, and uh, someone would send something as much as like, "Hi, Dave. This is Art." And on my end, when you send that. I could change whatever you wanted, didn't want to say, or I could put anything in there. I could put a whole paragraph in and it would be associated with you. And that was really dangerous for some people because if they're out there playing around and uh, poking around or, or maybe adulterous uh, situations going, uh, people could really add enhance to something and maybe get, get them to say maybe things that they didn't want to say or you know really get, put somebody in, in, in a bundle because they could uh, basically blackmail them. Correct. And... And besides making up their own story, uh, we at that time we had no concept of what cyberspace was. You know, we didn't we didn't see cyberspace as you know. I always thought it was like outer space is what I've come to learn about it, because there's some stuff that's way out there. And and the email uh, process to prove it's authentic, you have to show that that person that touched those keys is the same person who sent that thing that went into your email box. You remember that when the, yeah. the thing yeah, used to was... say, hello, this is AOL or whatever the hell they said. Yeah. Something yeah. like that, I can't remember. But, but showing that process in between sending it and when it was received and when the police then forensically took a laptop and discovered the emails, you had to show this thing's bouncing all, and it bounces all over the world. Right, right. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure I even know, you know, to this day, 20 years later or 30 since I started using this computer of mine, I don't know that I can actually tell you all the nuance of this. Um, was that difficult for you? Well, I, I hired an expert uh, who is a Michigan State uh, young professor. And uh, he he went through and did the whole analysis of the of the software because the uh, law enforcement and your office obtained that, and that was vitally important in this case. But the same situation with the, on my point was is exactly what you said. Somebody can write anything in. At that time, there were no safeguards, so I could just say hi, and you could put in anything you want from me. And when we're dealing with somebody who is like this. And they have this relationship and, you know, back and forth. It was this torrid relationship. Sometimes it was great. Sometimes they were fighting, all sorts of things like that. You just wondered, is this, was this real? Because she was acting like she was assaulted by a whole bunch of people that her husband made her do. It, just, it didn't seem realistic. And there was no evidence really of it. But you could take a picture and pretend, you know, use makeup and show that you're all beat up by your husband, which, which occurred in this particular case. And it really didn't happen. It really didn't happen, and I, I was looking at this like, "Wow, this thing is uh, this thing is so manipulatable that uh, she sat, it's almost as if she sat in the, in the dark recesses of her home and constructed a narrative for you know this fabulous soap opera." 